We are, we are, we are fully started. Before, tend to as well. That's amazing. Okay, so um, can I just uh, make a point? What is um, Kathy doing here today? I thought you were supposed to be with your children, grandchildren. That was last week. Oh, right, the hell was last week. That's okay. Um, just before the class, so that's why I was a bit... Goff can't make it today. Um, and um, Andrea's still away on a foreign holiday somewhere. Jane's obviously going to be back in soon. Your daughter's not here, but you're going to have to buy your, sis your sister. So who else is missing today? Chris. Dennis. Oh, Chris is... Dennis is away with his son. And then Chris oh. isn't here because... Fair enough. It's all good excuses. <laughs> right, so... Um, <laughs> I didn't know we needed an excuse. Maybe the good one. You need the good one. <laughs> right, so we're doing the archaeology of the art. Actually, it's more, it's more than the... It, it, it's... It's turned out to be the, arche the archaeology of what's left of um, the seven ancient wonders. Uh, but I've managed to chuck a little bit more out into it. I've, I've, um, this has been a very difficult one to do because there's a, a lot in it. Um, and I've tried to have to reduce um, um, the, the spec of the lecture, really. So one thing we're going to start off with is the archaeology of the art of the seven ancient wonders. Except... We're only going to cover one of them. And why are we going to only cover one of them? Well, Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Um, I think there'd be a lot of guesswork, really. And the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus, um, it, there's nothing much left of it except one or two columns. So that's going to be very difficult to examine the art of that one. Um, the statue of Zeus at Olympia. Well, there was nobody around back in the day to take any photographs of it. We've no idea really what it was, whether it was a marble statue, uh, whether it was a fully gold statue, whether it was a wooden statue with, with, with gold cladding on the outside or something, we're not sure. The, uh, the mausoleum at Halicarnassus, a huge mausoleum um, in southwestern Turkey. Again, we've got lots of... We, we, we looked at that one a, f a few weeks ago. Well, um, a little bit. They say, they say, um, but the problem is what is where and what is this? And that's the problem. Colossus of Rhodes, um, all we've got is um, images painted hundreds of years later, thousands of years later of a bronze statue that lasted, but only stood um, for less than a hundred years. So, um, but it was one of the, um, seven ancient wonders um, and the lighthouse of Alexander well that's sort of in it today um, because we, we've got the collapsed remains of the lighthouse of Alexander found in the bay at Alexandria itself um, north of um, north of the coast of Egypt so one thing I've decided to do was to um, put in some of my um, worldwide uh, wonders, um, but one or two are definitely not ancient. The idea of a list of ancient wonders is something that goes back all the way to some of the earliest forms of written um, documents, all the way down to the age of Herodotus uh, in 450. But as you can see, um, Herodotus, when Herodotus is writing, the mausoleum of Halicarnassus was not standing, the, uh, the Colossus of Rhodes wasn't standing, and the lighthouse of Alexander wasn't standing. So we had a list with, um, some say the Giza Pyramids was on the original list, but some say it wasn't on the original list of Herodotus. But definitely Hanging Gardens of Babylon and the walls of Babylon itself, they, they were part of the original list of ancient wonders. And why is it seven? Um, I've been asked that every single time, so I'm just going to curveball straight in there. Why is it seven ancient wonders? The answer is... We don't have the foggiest. Um, weirdly enough, I, I thought I thought the number seven was was um, a number that very few people used. So all my lottery numbers are seven, seventeen, uh, twenty-seven, thirty-seven, and something else, right? And then one by one, everybody said, "Oh, well, that's my lucky number as well. Those are my lottery numbers." So when my lottery numbers do come up, I'll end up with fifty quid. But that's not the point. So seven seems to be a popular number. Uh, today, however, um, the numeric system, as explained when um, the other Chris was here, Chris and David, 
She explained that obviously the, the numeric system in the past could have been starting naught, one, two, nine, and then you might have had 11 numbers in the numeric system or 12 numbers in the numeric system. So the idea of the number seven has been completely lost in antiquity. This is um, 2,500 years on, a Y7 we will never know. Um, I wanted to sort of give some stereotypical <coughs> images of the Parthos um, and the mausoleum of Halicarnassus, but there's no need to. Not, lots of these sites, the, the pyramids themselves are still with us today, uh, but um, some of you who believe in um, conspiracy theories that there was an earlier civilization on the planet uh, and that um, lots of what we do see um, around the world being excavated today were from earlier civilizations that existed beyond 12,000 years ago. Um, and those are mainly the sites that we can't explain today. That's something else altogether. We're looking at archaeological fact today. Now, the Great Pyramids of Giza, I, I, I very much doubt, uh, were built um, at the time of Khufu. I believe they were built a lot earlier because we've only got one tiny little inscription um, at the Great Pyramid uh, of Giza, Great Pyramid of Khufu, actually said this was made by Khufu. Other than that, there are no real contemporary carvings in the entire um, Great Pyramid um, at Giza itself. However, um, that is a monument that deserves its right within the annals of the Earth's ancient wonders. Um, and we're not going to go much over these now. But the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, we do believe, are not to be found at Babylon at all. They're believed to be found um, at Minerva on Nimrud. Both sites uh, desecrated and completely destroyed uh, by the Islamic Caliphate um, of ISIS. So what I'm going to do is jump straight in there. Can, can we just have two of you, um, from what you, you know about my interests, no, we're not going to do the, um, the great wonders of the um, um, Etruscans, even though I, I would love to. Um, any, any great wonders that I might put in my list? Keith? There's not going to be the Maginot line, that's for sure. Stonehenge? That's one. And you, that sh shouldn't really be in there because I don't really like Stonehenge, but that's in the list. Go on, what other great? <coughs> Inca stuff, maybe. Though. Which one? Up in the cloud, the building. Yeah. Yeah. Which, Ma Machu Picchu. Actually, I'm really oh. impressed. So you really know me. Actually, can I? There's, there's, a, there's a really difficult one, you know, and it's not Great Zimbabwe on Map and Wagi. Come on, let's just. There's another. There's a couple more on the list, but ma just think maybe what one of the others might be. Do you, know, do you know what? Right, no, but that is actually part of the, in four weeks' time, we're actually going to be looking at that site as an individual art of Gallipoli Tepe. We're going to be doing that. Go on, what, what, are the, what are the site? Deliberately left that out. Come on. I just saw my ex missing one in the purple. Um, go on. Um, The Chinese terracotta army. Oh, really? Yeah. Bingo. And then there's 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 a couple of others that we'll we'll leave. So and and and, um, and actually um, what about the, the Great Wall of China. That we see an image of that, but no, I can't. I do too much in China, you know, because they've already got theirs. It's, it's quite big, really, isn't it? It is quite big. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it's too big as a great wonder. You know, it's the only thing that can be seen from space. Um, Except it is. Except it isn't. Now, Kathy, just, just go with the flow I know. Shh. Um, okay, here we go. So, uh, just back to this original list, really. We, well, I, I know, yeah, so, the, the, the Temple of Zeus, the Temple of Artemis, uh, the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus, Colossus of Rhodes, Lighthouse of Alexander, <coughs> Great uh, Pyramids of Giza, Hanging Gardens of Babylon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So obviously you put that further up. That gives you an idea where these, and strangely enough, they're all in this area. Um, because those original individuals, um, I might say something a little bit racist well, a bit. Well, if that's the, where he was from, it's obvious. He's not gonna put that's what I was gonna say. China, is he? <laughs> um, the, these, these individuals themselves, Actually, no, that's a, not the sentiment I was looking for. Uh, they, 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 were, they, they were very much... Um, they, their world was only this world, okay? Um, and if they had been aware 
of sites further away. They may have added them into the list. However, they were aware um, of the access into the Atlantic Ocean, where there were meant to have been the Pillars of Hercules. They're on some people's lists. So that would they, the Greeks would have been aware. But no one's were aware a thousand years earlier. So there's, you know, there's other wonders around the world. It was just that the places that they could probably visit themselves and they were truly aware of were the sites that they wrote about in their list. However, this is the other point. Um, some people missed out the Great Pyramids of Giza as not as impressive as lots of these other things. Um, so that, that's, that's a very important point. Um, so we're going to gently go on to um, and the, that so the statement I was going to make because you jumped in there, Kathy. I've lost what it is in my wonderful yeah. mind of mine. So, that, Kathy, that, the Delphic Oracle was one on some lists, wasn't it? Delphic yeah. Oracle, yeah. Um, because more it was the Del Delphic Oracle wasn't great in okay. stature of building, yeah. but in stature of the mind, in stature of influence, yeah, it should be on the list. Um, but actually, the, the, the stat it's not the Temple of Zeus that's in the list. Which is great. The, 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 the collapsed um, ruins at Olympia, right? The, the German archaeologist said, well, we'll just leave her as it is. All the collapsed columns, it looks magnificent, right? The temple's not in the list. The statue of Zeus is on the list. And the statue of Zeus itself had to fit inside the temple. So it could have been as big or as tall as the Colossus of Rhodes. So, move on. So, we think about art. We think about the aspirations of what people wished um, that the afterlife was about. They, they wished their dreams to be a portent for what was reality on the planet. And this, this, is, this is a piece of art from the 1600s, uh, um, 1600s, 1700s. And this is known as Hemsberg Panorama of the um, Abduction of Helen amidst the wonders of the ancient world. And to be honest with you, there's so many wonders on there, I can't identify practically all of them because they just put them all in there. There's a, uh, this is produced in the late 1600s, early 1700s, and you've got the bridge over the Tiber, for example. What's that doing in this list? You, you've got the, um, maybe the temple uh, at um, uh, Mahalakonassus. Um, Maybe you've obviously got the Colossus of Rhodes over here, but there's all the ancient wonders in here, okay? Or and Her Hercules himself, the buttocks of Hercules, he is an ancient wonder, okay? So the fact of the matter is, yeah, er erotica next week, and Goff said he is definitely here next week. Um, it, it, even if we've got a wheel of here in a, in a push chair, he's here next week, apparently. Um, loads of buttocks, front and back bottoms let next week. Okay, and, and fallacies for the men. But moving on. Um, so art for art's sake, in illustrating things that maybe existed or they didn't exist, um, is very much what the ancient wonders are about. Um, you know, they don't have to be real to be an ancient wonder. You do have lists of modern wonders. And do you know what's on the list of modern wonders? Created by man. Come on, it's not the greatest in the world. All right, Dan. It's not the it's not the Empire State Building. It's in fact on the top of the list of people's modern wonders is the Sydney Opera House. I know what most of you in the room would, wouldn't even put that on your list, but the Sydney Opera House is on the list of modern wonders, and in fact, on the list of all-time wonders, it's also on that list of seven alongside the Taj Mahal and obviously the Great Pyramids at Giza. Um, but we don't even include the Taj Mahal in my list. Which I do think it's wonderful. Uh, again, back, back to this original list again. We'll, we'll zoom in on this a bit as well. Um, so this gives you an idea of scale. Again, the point being made is you, you use the Delphi um, Temple, the Delphi Coracle, um, um, as, as basically the point I'm trying to make now. And the point I'm trying to make now 
is it doesn't have to be great in stature to be an ancient wonder, because that's how small the statue of Zeus is. It, it pales into the 150, 148 metre tall, 150 metre tall um, Great Pyramid. Um, it's it's in, insignificant. In the Colossus of Rhodes is actually quite tiny. Um, and the imagination of, of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, that's more wide, but it's not in the area um, of the Great Pyramid. The Temple of Artemis is, is tiny, dwarfed by the Hanging Gardens and dwarfed by the mausoleum of Halicarnassus. And then you have the Pharos at Alexander that came down apparently uh, in 1300, um, 700 years ago. Uh, that was one of the only two remaining in the original list, apparently. But again, I keep saying the original list. It can't be the original <laughs> list because some of these didn't exist at the time of Herodotus. So th this is a, an atypical list um, of the ancient wonders. It's very confusing because lots of stuff has been altered and changed throughout time. So we think, all oh, right, this person writes in 400 BC, but that monument didn't exist then. So how is it on the list? People add things over time. So again, but these, these, the one, one thing when I was a child, there's a very popular video that I've made on YouTube. Strangely enough, my most popular YouTube, um, videos on YouTube uh, are the ones that um, I put together in a couple of minutes and chuck them on. Typical, isn't it? Um, and the one that caused the most, most controversy um, is the one on slavery. The second one that caused the, the, uh, um, a great deal of controversy is the Arch of Sesiphon, where people keep correcting me and saying, it's not Ketsesiphon, it's Sesiphon. Um, actually, in my list of ancient, ancient wonders, Sesiphon, the Arch of Sesiphon, is actually in it. So that's one of the other sites that we're looking at today. The Arch of Sesiphon, Ketsesiphon. Because there's a huge arch that still stands today. That survived, very near Babylon, that survived Isis, for whatever reason. Because there was a link with Islam to do with the arch. Um... I made a statement to wind somebody up on Tuesday and it really worked. I said, there's nothing artistic about this. And it, yes, there is a geometry and symmetry. That's all about art. And I said, thank you. All right, then we'll go any further with that. We know. Um, but in itself, as a, as, as a projection, art is a projection, isn't it? Right? Um, you draw a little picture for your grandchildren. Um, it, it's a projection of what you think, right? It's not necessarily what's there, it's art. A child draws a picture, um, and it may not look like you, Lynn. You might have four heads, but it's the, it's the way your grandson sees you, okay? And the four heads might mean that, that he thinks you're beautiful, um, he thinks that you, you give him really nice food, so those are two heads. It's a different way, art can, art can have different ways of projecting, and, and this in, in the greatest form of a projection of what mankind is about is this pyramid, three of them, is, but this is one of them, the Great Pyramid of Khufu, or Kyop. Uh, the, great, the Great Pyramid itself, and it, it's, um, I'm reminded, is, is, is it um, one, one sixtieth uh, of a degree out from True North? Or something like that. I think that's about right, actually. One, one sixtieth. It is so. And somebody, I remember somebody talking about this. They said, um, happened to be the historian Graham Hancock. Uh, he said that um, even today, um, he, you know, modern planners wouldn't go through to that detail. It's it's okay to be like, you know, one tenth out. You know, it's fine. Nobody's going to notice. Who cares? And in fact, the, the, the poles have changed, so it could have actually been smack on accurate back in the day anyway. Um, so to produce something of, of, of great majesty, a great majesty, uh, a, a great projection of, of humanity, um, has to be, um, in a way, perfect. Symmetry has to be smack on. And, and the, the temples, the statuary, um, the way the terracotta figures of the terracotta army are formed, they're all smack on. They're, they're, they're either um, in, in respect of exact human figures to get a good representation or 
Um, symmetry and geometry is perfect. So I think that what that's what makes a great wonder. Um, and the coracle of Delphi, well, you can come away whatever you think because you're so gassed out at the end. You know, the, the, oh, it was a huge temple, right? So there's loads of different ways of looking at these wonders. Um, and thinking that this would have been beautifully cladded in limestone blocks and the huge skill to produce this is to be found in your newsletter. Bill has written a piece. Um, he, he's basically, um, I, I don't know why he does this, but um, he's written a piece about um, Hadrian's Wall and how many stones were used in the construction of Hadrian's Wall. Uh, ah, yeah, close it, Kathy. Right, thank you. Um, and in that, he, d he describes from his calculations that the amount of stones used on Hadrian's Wall um, only equates to under half of the volume of stone required to build this pyramid. In, in fact, more like a third of the amount of, of, of tonnage was used to, to build Hadrian's Wall as compared to this. And that gives you an idea of scale of this wonderful site. But to go away from moving away from the art, let's get back onto where we need to be. And strangely enough, we're at this site straight away. I'll just go and check something. Good. There we go. We didn't need to say any more about the Great Pyramid, simply because we all know about it, but that needed to go on the list. That's number one. Um, Stonehenge. Now, Stonehenge itself is an enigma upon an enigma. I didn't fail to mention it because it comes in at the right point. Um, the pyramids at Giza, the Great Pyramid, was it a burial chamber? Was it a treasury? They was it something money. else? They didn't find any mummies inside there. They, they found nothing. They found nothing in it. And the weird thing is, in fact, just because it, just because it may seem to be a burial chamber of a great leader, doesn't mean to say it is. Um, so that's an enigma still. There, if if you had a room full of every book that had been written on that one single pyramid at Giza, you would need this entire room stacked up to the ceiling with the books on theories to why it was constructed. And if we take that bit of the, this bit of the room, right, maybe up to about here, the same number of books have been written about Stonehenge to why Stonehenge was constructed. Um, and you obviously get so many people uh, in awe over the movement of the blue stones and the marble stones and this and that and but and and these people coming from here and the DNA and all the rest of it, um, people seem to miss miss the rudimentary obvious uh, things that are missing when you go to Stonehenge, the the amount of soil that's missing at Stonehenge for a start, the ground level would have been a lot higher, okay, because there's been a hell of a lot of erosion. It makes sense. You've got all this trampling around, there's going to be erosion, soil is going to de deplete around the landscape, it's going to break down, so there's less source. So that's one fact. So the evidence you do find is really restricted to a small moment in time. So basically, whatever they find at Stonehenge, which was used, well, if I say a thousand years, I'd be wrong. If I said two thousand years, I would be wrong as well. It was used for such an incredible length of time. So when they do find anything at Stonehenge, they say, oh, right. This is what Stonehenge was about for all the two, three thousand years. People come from this place and that, and you're thinking, no, that's a, that's, a, that's a tiny indication of something. And how do you know that that DNA stuff that comes from Orkney links to the DNA stuff that comes from Wales, for example, or the DNA stuff? How do you know that was all part of the same event? And the answer is, the answer is no. Because this isn't the same event as last week, and it's not the same event as next week. This, just, just because you've got a newsletter here today, it doesn't mean it's to say you're going to get one every week. But if somebody looking in on this room might think, well, he turns up, he gives up this paperwork, he's late every week, which is a, which is a given. Um, and they all get newsletters, and all of you, only you guys turn up. Well, four of the regulars are away today. 
So you can't judge history, you can't just judge, judge a site and the meaning and what's going on at the site based on these little things. And like it really gets on my work now. The, the archaeologists could be employed in doing more useful things, like actually working out uh, what these things are really about. We've all seen this site, we may have all been there. Um, I've been amongst the stones uh, with people taking heroin and um, marijuana and all the rest of it when you're allowed to go on the site and touch your solstice. Um, but for the rest of the time of the year, you're not allowed anywhere near these monuments, which is, I don't think people should be um, allowed near them at all. But um, that's me talking as archaeologists because the erosion of foot patter uh, is naturally destroying the site every single year. But that's what I feel, not necessarily what you feel. Um, on these stones themselves, uh, I'm not going to show you any, any images because we've got a lot to go through. But at Stonehenge itself, you can find um, um, carvings of um, people, they, they, they've carved little bronze axes into the stone. Um, the great sarsen stones, these great sarsen stones on the inside, you can see carvings of them. And they're really faint anyway. And on some of these stones, you can see where they've replicated bark. Surely that's art in itself. Who's to say this site wasn't painted? Have you ever seen Stonehenge painted red or white in any illustration? Have you ever seen that? Why not? Why? I've seen a programme on TV recently and mm -hmm. if you clean them, they're they green underneath. Clean, they clean. But what about have yes, you are right. What what about painting them with a bit of red? A bit of sort of greenish ochre, making them shine because because actually, and actually, the, the, the chalk around, if you can't get that white gleam, you can chalk it up anyway, so you can have it white in any which way you choose. Because if you do this with stone, why can't you do, if, if you did this with wood, why can't you do this with stone? We often hear people talking about wood henge, and they say, oh, they used to have these totems, and they used to be beautifully painted. We don't ever hear about the stones being painted, and why not? Why not? You have the blue stones there as well. Oh God, that's something else. Um, Ah, uh, won't. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The the th the thing the thing is right. As I said to you before, the sense of permanence in the past was things to rot down and to recycle into life again. Rejuvenation. rejuvenation. Uh, stone itself is not really permanent um, because it doesn't recycle into the earth. But to us, it is permanent. Okay, what am I talking about? Well, those are some of the theories. Uh, by painting these stones, and then a week later it rains and the stones are washed away of the images, wow! One, can you imagine the majesty? My God, one minute they were coloured blue. And the next minute, they're white. And it suddenly comes, oh my God, they're red again. Can you imagine the majesty of that? Pure, that that's art in itself, okay? Um, and th this itself show those are the Aubrey Halls, the legendary Aubrey Halls. Um, um, the, the, these, these around here as well are the areas where the stones, so, so we, we, these are stone sockets. Were stones in there originally? Um, are they being taken away? Were they posting them? We don't know, again. Little things we don't know. Uh, these little blue things represent the blue stones. And these big ones represent the Sarsen stones, the Triathlon stones. Um, and these, this itself represents only one moment within the existence of Stonehenge. Um, you, could, you could say that um, art itself, I, I mentioned this and some, lots of people completely disagree. They disagreed in... Um, um, last week in Bridgen, they all did. I said, well, you know, um, art is, is always living, always changing, always evolving. Um, the art that I produced, I, I was never ever happy with it. I, I, I used to, um, when, I, when, when I was becoming divorced, my head was in such a mess that um, uh, my ex-wife le left behind all the really expensive um, paints behind, you know, 100 pound a tube things. So I started with a little trowel making these things into trees. They were brilliant, you know, and I had little leaves and stuff, and I'd do the leaves and veins and everything on them, and it looked beautiful. Um, still hanging on the wall. But I was never ever happy. They were never ever complete. 
Um, Stonehenge was never ever complete. Nobody ever sat down and said this is going to be like it is. Is is this architecture? Is this art? Um, this this is what art is, a projection of what humanity is. And that's undeniable. This was produced by humans, not aliens or not little creatures, not sort of pixies. Uh, this was built by humans. This is a projection. That's what art is. And we mentioned the Great Wall of China. It would have been great to have done the Great Wall of China, but obviously time restricting what I'm able to do. Um, but the Great Wall of China um, is thousands of miles long, and we don't really know how long it went. In fact, the Great Wall goes off into so many directions that you know it's not a single work, it's not a single piece. Um, structurally, the Great Wall of China is seen more in a structural um, aesthetic rather than um, an artistic, um, but. It's, it is beautiful. Um, it is a projection of what man is able to do, and women, humanity, what, um, what we're able to do. Some say it was clearly for defence. Some say it was to move people around the landscape. Some say <coughs> an emperor built it initially because they wanted to build it initially. Um, its meaning and what it was used for over time completely changed. No doubt, if you had a thousand people building up along here, right, um, they could simply demolish that wall and go, in, go further south, or the other way around. Um, what, is, what the wall is about, again, is another enigma. But we, we know it was built at, but at certain times um, in our historical and archaeological past. But that's not this. This uh, is my third ancient wonder and you've got over 6,000 figures there and each of the individual figures and forget what this is about it, it, it's, it's, it's a burial monument and it, these these meant to represent um, individual people serving the emperor or whatever but forget what that's about just just focus on what this is it, it's is the greatest collection of terracotta figures anywhere on the planet um, and these, these, these terracotta figures, uh, they're not solid sort of chunks, they're, they're, they're the usual terracotta hollow figures, otherwise it wouldn't be called terracotta figures. <laughs> but but the, these, these themselves are all individual. They're all completely individual. Have any of you actually ever worked in a pottery? Well, um, a, a, a potter, I have. A, 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 you, you get moulds. And the, the potter keeps reminding me that um, the mould itself ha has, whenever you put clay inside a mould, the clay shrinks. So whatever you're um, creating, um, so you've got, you've got the original cast and then you're producing the mould around it, you remove the, the cast and then you use the mould to produce the terracotta cast. Um, so the, the, the mould itself has to be slightly bigger than what you're trying to create. And it's also um, associated with the temperature of how you're creating whatever you're creating in the first place. Um, so that instantly would mean that you'd have need, require an individual mould for these 6,000 figures of, of holes and, and human being and so on. But that's not exactly true because you could actually slightly alter the mould every time it's being used for firing. Slightly alter it. But I'm also reminded in potteries that when you're creating pottery, the mould itself degrades every time you use it as a mould. So eventually the mould itself has to be smashed up. And you can break it down again into dust and you can make it into another mould. Um, but Probably each of these figures was created from maybe um, a thousand individual moulds. Um, and each of those moulds were maybe changed about six times to get the detail and clarity of what you're trying to create. There's lots of smashed up versions. There's lots of damaged versions as well. But this is truly wonderful. This is my list.
And that's where, uh, that's where our location of our terracotta, in the heart of China. And like many of these things, there could be many more of these armies out there waiting to be found. Um, but this is the terracotta army, which I'm sure some of you have seen. Yeah, I know some of you have been to some of the exhibitions in London, where they've brought some of the things. You've, been, you've seen it, Keith? Anybody else? You've seen it? I think they brought one or two over, did they? Or yeah, there were about three and a horseman as well under the chariot. I think that's enough, isn't it? But that's enough. But the problem is, the reason why I'm saying it that way, when you get archaeology, like the trip to um, Scotland, we had Adrian's War. Mm -hmm. Michelle said to me on the Sunday, she said, I'm Roman doubt. Um, three forts is enough for me. Three forts is enough for him, because he's obsessed with it. But if you went to see a thousand terracotta figures in London, you wouldn't, get enough, you wouldn't appreciate it. But three figures, you do. Because you can see the differences in detail. You, you, can, you can get an idea. You can really stare at them with, without, without the wood. You can see the tree itself. Um, and this, this is when this comes into its own sense of art. When was that discovered in Burma? The Burma War? Was that most recent? Very, relatively recent, yeah, hang on a bit. Um, you, um, the, um, yeah, I'm going to complain about my uh, wonderful friend, uh, Lynn. Yeah. You've done it again. <laughs> hang on a bit. It seems to have. Hmm. Hello. Something's going on. Yeah. Hang on a bit. Seem to have a problem with this thing. Hang on a minute. It's because your phone went off, that's what it was. Okay. Oh. Oh. Right, we do have a problem. Hang on. Bear with me a sec. Hang on. I don't work out what's going on. Do -do -do. You were into Game of Thrones, eh? No, I've done recorded. That's why you're trying to watch it. Yeah. Is it good? Game of Thrones. Yeah, I, I haven't got Sky, so I've got to download it, so I've got to wait for everyone to watch it and wait for the next thing for a decent copy to come out. But <laughs> yeah, it's worth seeing. Is it, is it just the first episode? Yeah, I'm going to shut my mouth. I'm not going to say anything. I think you should. Sure. <laughs> but yeah, it's good. It's worth wait. It was worth waiting for. Yeah. Almost two years is a long time, but yeah. Well, as long as I could. Yeah, thanks for that, Steve. Yeah. Um, as, as, you as you can see, these figures. That face looks sort of similar to this one, but look at that detail there. It's different. And look at this individual's headgear behind. Very different from this one. And naturally, now you can see that they're hollow, because that guy's head's missing. Um, this guy is looking forward, that guy's looking down. The eyebrows are sort of curved inwards, those are straight. The hair is similar to sort of someone else. This one behind, but the hair is different, very different. These have all got different individual styles. They're, they're all, there's, there's all um, uh, little changes. And, and the armour themselves is very different. So you can imagine maybe what they would have done, they would have had this one mould, they would have slightly changed that, had a figure over there and <coughs> these things. But do these actually represent individual figures? It's very difficult to know. Are these an artist in impression um, of what the figures look like? Again, it's very, very difficult to know. And look at that one. Look at a cute face on that. I, I, I actually think it might look quite spooky, but I, I think there's something, um, there's something very human about that face. The, the way, the way I think they all are, but just the fact that everyone's different gives it a little bit of a meaning, mm. you know. Mm. Like yeah, that. exactly. A sort of a macabre. Yeah. The, the, yeah. These were these were all people once, yeah, and these these were all like, mm. yeah the, these were all part of our our joint sense of humanity, that yeah. joint experience. Well, right behind it, not ah, you can see that one gently in there. <laughs> He's not happy, is he? That's a grumpy man. He's a grumpy man. Happy man, grumpy man. There's no, there's no reason why you can't have that. Okay. The thing is, if you made batches of the same type and spread them out amongst them, there's so many there that they would still look 
individual. Mm. Don't look at that one. <laughs> Um, the, 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 thing, the, the point I'm trying to make, you might, the, the point I'm trying to make, if, you, if you've got, with a mould, if you make slight changes in the next firing, you just sort of do this and whatever. Um, but then, then the problem comes with another point. You could, have had, you could have had all these created, the body parts made out of the same mould. But with the other example, um, you can all remember... Um, uh, a certain Pertwee when he used to do Aunt Sally, the crow man, oh, yeah. yeah, and he used to change the heads. Well, that's an indication there that they that you might have sort of uniform moulds for the bodies. Um, are the heads actually individual or actual set individuals? Well, the hands are the same. Everything else is all the same, isn't it? It's just their. Um Actually, no, that, that's, the, the, the bodies are, yeah, this is the point, there's different, all, all these are completely different torsos, but it, I see your point, I see your point with what you're saying with the bodies, if you spread them around, but the heads themselves were deliberately detachable, um, and is that about, um, I, I don't know if anyone's actually put all these into a computer, and sort of said, right, it, it, is, are any of these actually the same, are any of the heads actually the same, and it, it's very likely that they're not because there's slight changes. And if there's slight changes, is that the artist making those slight changes or they're actually based on actual real individuals, which makes it a huge echo from the past. Uh, um, a, a, th a 3D photograph. He, he, he look, when I'm looking at him, he looks like he's really worried, to be honest with you. So I used to do model making, and sometimes you'd get the figures and they'd, you'd have a torso, head, arms and legs and you'd be able to put them together and make them completely different mm. with similar pieces. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So that's oh, probably that's what they've done the there. Yeah. 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 So it's quite it's cunning the way they've done it. Yeah. 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 Probably what they did. Whatever people made them, they don't have it. Because there's a sound involved. I've worked yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay, Lynn. It wasn't your fault after all. No, I think it's the film, isn't it? They're all, they were actually human ones and they were magically transformed. Exactly, so. yes. I like the mummy films. Even the third one. Do you know what, right, Steve? I really missed you and you've really made up for it, right? <laughs> By the way, Steve, Steve will be back with us in two weeks, won't you, on a regular basis? Yeah, I'm busy again next week, but after that I should be back as normal. Because Lynn thought you'd, you'd bombed us all. She was saying, you know, was he... Is he really upset with us? Like, and I said, well, you know, it is you, Lynn, after all. Um, now, I'm only having a go at Lynn because she ate all the chocolates on Sunday. Ooh, whole box of them. Ooh, whole ooh. box. It wasn't me. Now, what are we doing next? What, what's this? Come on, Easter Island. We all know Easter Island, don't we? Yeah? Mm -hmm. We all know the statues of Easter Island. There's, no, there's over a thousand, odd in, a thousand odd statues on Easter Island. Some, some, some are complete. Um, some are in an erect form, some are still being quarried, some are still transported, some are deliberately chucked into the sea. But each of these, um, again, not in the same extent to the terracotta army, where there's individ individualities. But you actually look at these heads, and some are tall, some, some are fat and squat, some are like this, some have got uh, really big noses. Um, some of them, some of the Easter Island figures are, are, are very different from one to another. And the, the, the majority of them all look out to the sea. And again, okay, forget about that theory 12,000 years ago. It's not my theory, you know, about lost civilizations and so on and so on. Um, the Easter Island figures themselves um, um, are last but one in the newest of my monuments. Um, the, these, these come in around roughly around 600 years ago, around 1,400 years AD. Um, when we haven't, when Christopher Columbus hasn't even actually gone anywhere yet, um, when the only contact these people would have had with continents may have been Chinese or Japanese explorers, because the, 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 these wonderful islands here, um, away off the coast of Chile, um, over 300 kilometres away from the coast of Chile, so it's quite a long distance. I don't think you're going to be able to swim it on a Wednesday evening. 3,000. Did I say 300? I meant 3,000, yes, yeah, sorry. 3,000! I'm glad you corrected me there. 
I wouldn't be able to swim 300 metres. Uh, three, 300 metres of... Oh, forget that, you confuse me now, but it's 3,000. Um, that's the figure that we're talking about. So we've got the coast of Chile. Um, and this was a landscape that was completely isolated. It's a completely isolated island. But nevertheless, they had the skills to produce these in the first place. And I, I know when I present this in Progen today, one of my regulars in Progen will say, well, that obviously proved they had, they had iron to create these statues in the first place. Um, however they created them, they, they, they are no doubt beautiful, beautiful in the form that they're presented. So let's carry on. There you go. They're all different, aren't they? So some, some have got much taller heads, some have got different... We, we, got, we can zoom in on some of these. In, in a, there's a few that I've got, not too many. But you can see them all in a row there. Um, and on the tops of their head, we've got this really light, um, light sort of tuferous rock on the top. So these, these are carved out, um, out of um, um, volcanic rock, so it's going to be um, a basalt-type rock. Um, and these themselves, some of them, some of them are deeper in the ground. They're actually displayed. Um, some have got beautiful carvings on the rear. Um, and there they are. Look at that. Whenever they've excavated any of these, they've, ac they've actually they've actually thought what's below the surface. And what they found is that there's usually lots of beautiful carvings on the back. But you can see that they that they it's got slight differences to them. Um, look at the chin there compared to that chin. It's much flatter, it's more projected. Do these represent individuals? Do they represent gods? Or are they just art? Um, I've got to say this, which, which I should have said. We always think, as we looked at the lecture when we looked at um, prehistoric art, we always think that there's a meaning for these things. You know, people go into sort of, oh, it meant this. It meant they were creating these statues. They were carving them out of the solid rock. They were using all their island resources to carve these things um, to keep the gods happy. And when the gods weren't uh, completely appeased on a Wednesday afternoon at 5.15, when the crops failed, we decided to toss them over the cliff. Well, lots of areas on the island, they're not tossed over the cliff. Um, so some of the islanders fared better than others. There's always, this, um, there's always this morbid idea, which I can't say is wrong, but there's always this really morbid idea that, they, uh, that the islands in creating these felled all their trees. That's a really good theory. And when all the trees have been felled, uh, the soil started to lose the nutrients because all the rich soils were being washed into the sea and there was no barrier of the trees stopping all the soil being washed into the trees, in, into the sea. And therefore, people started to starve and they started to stop carving these things and they decided to toss them all into the sea. However, this is, this is only 600 years ago that this is happening. Most Pacific islands had already been completely bereft of their trees because of human beings before that point anyway. So let's chuck something else in. Whenever you see those theories um, on these programmes about Easter Island, and it says um, they fell all the trees to actually create these things, maybe think about the perspective that they didn't have many trees in the first place when they started carving them, which completely changes the meaning of these. It's a lot of presumption. Um, I've, I've heard people describe archaeologists as... Uh, people who have got no, um, who don't really use science. They, 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 as you go further back in time, um, archaeologists um, make up theories to try and prove things based on nothing. What I'm trying to do is say that there are also other ways of looking at these monuments, as well as looking at those theories. So again, another ancient wonder. Anyone else there? No. Right, a few more. We will, we, we will have a break here, won't we? Oh, look at that there. There's a, there's a whole load of them, and they're just not in a row. And that is another point. Having them all in a row, this is another point. Having them all in a row, looking out at sea, that's great. Having them all in a row with the um, sort of um, soft, um, two for us rock on their heads. Yeah, that's something else. 
having them scattered all around the island in different places looking out at sea, uh, which is very different than being created all in a row. And usually what they say, these were all created um, in about in a decade or something. Totally wrong, probably. Uh, but they've all got, they, 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 they're all different. They, they're all in different positions and stuff. One standing there looking out at the sea and thinking, right, there's a row over there and there's a load um, <coughs> very close to where they've been quarried. Uh, looking out over the landscape. Uh, there's been wonderful theories to how these were actually moved. Um, they, they, um, oh, they used some of the terms, the wiggly gadgety type do for a thingamajig, where they would put a little, um, they would have quarried this out of a rock, somehow got them vertical, and they would put a bit of a frame where they would walk, because of the, um, the weight disproportion and the gravity and all the rest of it, they would have a frame that would allow them to walk to the coast. <sighs> yeah, and you start to get really sort of drained with all these different theories. But the fact of the matter is, they were able to produce these things. They were able to move them in the first place. And I think that's the skill in itself. And how about this? After they had erected them, they thought, right, we'll move on to the next one. Is that a good theory? Based on, based on some evidence that I've seen, yes, it is. Um, I'm, I'm constantly reminded, I haven't used this for a while. When I was doing my History A-level, there was um, a painting on the wall in, my, in, my, um, in the history room. And it, um, it had a load of soldiers uh, marching into Damascus in 1917. And you're looking at this and you're thinking, wow, what are they doing there, right? And at the bottom it says, uh, basically the answer's there, it says, they're there because they're there. That's, that's a nice way of looking at things. You don't necessarily need an answer um, for everything in the past. We, we look at these things in the past and we marvel at their creation. And maybe that should be enough. Look, when you go to the Great Pyramids at Giza, you get somebody going around saying, this is this, and shut up, this is this, I don't want to know another theory. And you're missing what these marvels, they are true marvels. They meant something to the people that created them. They're there today. They're beautiful and marvellous things. And it's the same when, um, I, it's the same when somebody goes to a school concert of their children. The school concert last 45 minutes right and the parents are filming the whole bloody thing right and when they go home and they look at it on the, on the computer and the child turns around and says to their mum or dad did you actually see me in the concert um no because i was filming it and the child hearts heart drops um because we almost miss the meaning of these very subtle things and that's what the past was about, these very subtle things that meant a great deal to these people. Creating these things means a great deal to people. My, my granddad, just before he passed away, he had 10,000 pounds in the bank. Um, he was going to buy a new car at 94, right? 10,000 pounds. When he passed away, he, he dreamed of having a new car. For the sake, he just wanted a new car. That's all he wanted. He'd, he'd, he'd driven around in all these bangers all his life. He just wanted a new car. None of my family could see it, but that's all he wanted. Um, and it doesn't have to have a deep meaning all the time. You don't have to waste all this time. And then you can appreciate what, what is a human culture, what, what humanity has created. And this is one being carved out of the rock. Now... I'm going to go off into the same line I've just been going off onto. Um, who's to say that this was ever meant to have come out of the rock? We're told that this was meant to have come out of the rock and to have been erected somewhere. But maybe this, this, was, this figure was meant to be there and meant to stay there. Why do we always have to move it and, and people go oh isn't this shame that huge statue which is very different from the others isn't it a shame it wasn't displayed over there 
it's not a shame at all because you are not the people who are trying to create these things, these, these beauties out of the rock. Um, and actually, oh, and they say, oh, they failed. They failed in, in um, hacking this one out of the rock. They, they failed in hacking this one out of the rock. They didn't fail at all. They still created it. They, they're still showing us what they were about. They're still, they're projecting who they were. Peter? I was, uh, my, the way I'm thinking now is that my thoughts go to the people who suffered doing all these great wonders. The associate having rules to me that I think is mm-hmm. to assholes. And, uh, so, I, you know, it's all very well if humanity this, humanity that. But what about human suffering? What about human now, now you've really hit a sore nerve. Uh, you, you, look, you look at the Great Pyramid itself, the Great Pyramids themselves. We were told, we were told for thousands of years that the Great Pyramids were constructed by people who were, who were forced into slavery. And then it turns out that the people actually building the Great Pyramids were the ones that were treated the best in, in Egyptian society. They had their own villages, they had their own food. They had their own tombs that they were preparing. They were looked after. And when they went back to their villages, they thought, Christ, I wish I was still doing that. And then Pete made the other point. Pete, I needed a balance to my reply. Okay, I needed a balance. And then there's the other side of these ruthless leaders. Um, yes, um, there is great tr- sacrifice when they were constructing the Great Wall of China. We know that because there's bodies encased in it. I've actually been down into um, the hospital on the island of Jersey uh, with them saying that as soon as a Russian prisoner of war died building this, they would be encased in the concrete. Yeah, we know that. But there are times in the past, Peter, that some people believed in what they were doing and wanted to do these things. And that is humanity. Not necessarily. Right. Not necessarily um, about the, being whipped uh, by a great builder to do these things. So it might be people wanting to do it in, in the for the cause, in the service of somebody, and it might be because great rulers are, are forcing them to do something. Does that answer your question? No, you haven't changed my thinking. You've been killed if you refuse to do it. That's you know, that's, where, that's where I am right now with all this. But what about what about kings and rulers and what about creating these things because you wanted to? The people didn't have any option. Always. Pretty much. How do you know? Just my thinking, intuition, and a bit of reading. Okay. 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 I'll allow you that. I've got mine. I've got mine. Do you know that's probably the only time Peter hasn't agreed with me or something. Um. So what I'd like to do now. What I'd like to do now is I'm going to, um, actually, at this point, I'm going to go back into my computer. So I'm going to read out a couple of things. I'm going to take a break, okay? Mm-hmm. Sure. Right, Seven Wonders of the Ancient World um, is a list of remarkable constructions of classic antiquity. So it reads here, given by various authors in guidebooks or poems popular among um, Helen... Hellenic tourists. Were they in fact tourist lists? This is what this is saying. Were they actually put together for tourists? Again, or were they put together because somebody wanted to put a list together? Uh, I, I, don't think, I don't think Lynn's visiting any of these sites because she wants to put a list together for tourists. She's visiting them because she's interested. Okay, isn't that right, Lynn? Exactly. Uh, it's not always about the subtext of doing a list for other people. It might be doing something for yourself. Back to what I've said, building these monuments for yourself instead of a despotic ruler, as Pete was saying. The original uh, list inspired innumerable versions throughout the ages, as we've already mentioned. And everyone on this list in front of us, we've actually looked at. Um, this is a very interesting one. Um, written... Um, in the year 100 years BC, over 2,000 years ago, by Antipater of Sidon. Um, Antipater is a well-known uh, writer um, within the Greek stroke Roman world. And he, he wrote of his ideal of a list of seven ancient wonders. 
He writes as follows, I have gazed on the walls of impregnable Babylon, along which chariots may race. He's writing 100 years before the birth of Christ. And on the Zeus by the banks of the river Alpheus, two. I have seen the hanging gardens, three. And the Colossus of the Helos. Unfortunately, the Colossus of the Helos had already, be, had already come down with an earthquake over 100 years before. So he obviously hadn't been to Rhodes, but he was taking this list off someone else. So you can imagine, you're, you're a Greek tourist going to these places, and the site's already gone. The great man-made mountain of the lofty pyramids and the gigantic tomb of Morsalus of Halicarnassus. But when I saw the sacred house at Artemis, the towers to the clouds, the others were placed in the shade. For the sun himself has never looked upon its equal outside Olympus. And that's how he writes. And in fact, before we go on to break now, Philo of Byzantium, who was a mathematician, writing around the same time, a hundred years before the birth of Christ, didn't have a list of seven ancient wonders. He had a list of seven sites of the world. But it's always seven. It's always seven. But unfortunately, um, because some of it didn't survive, um, we didn't get the full list. Um, and the problem is that, that 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 thing that inspires us all um, brings up in our minds the idea of a bucket list. But each of our bucket lists are different from someone else's. And that is the human condition. We cannot all be controlled to think the same. Um, but we can dream in similar ways. What we're going to do, uh, we're going to take a break. Are there any questions? I thought that sounded pretty good. Thank you very much.